jump in if you have any questions. But yeah. All right, all right, Mike. So the first thing I just want to go through is we talked about your grip and you know the the club not being kind of down enough down enough in the fingers. We made a dot on your glove up here, kind of made a line on your glove also to keep the keep the grip below that line and make sure that heel pad sat up on top of the club. Um, you don't need to rotate your hand over anymore, your left hand over anymore. So in other words, you can still have what I would think of as like a one or a two knuckle grip on your on your the back of your left hand, but you just need to make sure that the club is down deeper in in your fingers. Why that's so important is because in your backswing, as you went back, one of the things we saw was that you lacked wrist hinge. So as we got to the top, there really wasn't a good angle between the shaft of the golf club and your left forearm. So one of the things on your own that you can do is practice getting the club in your fingers and making what I think of as kind of L swing. So you can make an L in the back swing. You can see that L I'm talking about is my left arm and the shaft of the golf club. And so I think of it like nine o'clock L and go through on the forward swing side and go through to about three o'clock with the right arm and make sure that you've rehinged the golf club. So on video, when you think about how your hands work, we kind of saw this look on the way back. I'm exaggerating. And then on the way through, we saw this look where your left hand rode high and your arm really kind of gapped out and chicken winged. And there was no real, there was no real swing or rehinge of the golf club or release on the forward swing side. So L to L swings is good for you just training your wrists to kind of hinge the club on the way back, rotate the club properly and rehinge or swing the golf club through impact on the way through. In addition to that, some stuff you can do without a golf club. So we talked a lot about the back of your left hand and the palm of your right hand and making sure that as you go through, you don't work kind of under where your right palm works under and the back of your wrist really cups. So we talked about kind of the logo of your glove or the knuckles feeling like you kept them more down through impact like this. Worked on your right hand, feeling like the right palm faced the ground more. You know, a good checkpoint for you when you're on your own hitting balls is just to hit little chip shots and pitch shots where you go through and you hold about halfway through. And so at this halfway through point, I think of it like you're almost shaking hands with the target or your right hand is on the side of the golf club. You want to make sure that as you do that, your right wrist isn't totally kind of thrown forward like that where your knuckles are facing up. So that's kind of the release that we saw earlier, an under release, and we need to kind of replace that with more of a trapping over type of a release. So as you go through and hold right here, I'd love you to look down and to have a little bit of an angle on small shots between your right forearm and the back of your right hand. What unhinges that wrist isn't you manually thrusting the club at the ball. External forces will take some of that hinge out, centrifugal force, momentum, whatever it is, but it's not you going like this. So on a small shot where there's not much momentum and centrifugal force, I should be able to, okay. All right, thanks, Mike.